Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Bilal Abdul Karim for OGN's Justice. Today, we're not going to talk about any new uh, inmates or anything like that that have fallen into any prison, but we're going to talk about justice and how it affects a society. Now, and before we do that, everybody should know by now that there's been a great crisis in the territories in and around Idlib. The Syrian people have grown fed up, they got very angry and began to rise up because of the price of bread in the uh, territories of Idlib. How did it get like that? We're gonna talk about that in a second. But first, we want everybody to know that Abu Muhammad Jolani, the leader of Hayat Tahrir Sham and the leader of those territories, uh, stepped in and he said um, that he's going to invest $3 million in the uh, bread sector and that's going to subsidize the bread so that the people will get more for their money. Now, a lot of Hayat Tahrir Sham supporters are hailing this as a great victory because Abu Muhammad Jolani stepped in and solved the problem. Not so fast. Let's ask ourselves how we got here. Well, the first thing is there's a word in Arabic. It's called ihtikar. Ihtikar means a monopoly. A monopoly has been created here in, um, in the territories in and around Idlib. What basically takes place is that no one is able to import uh, flour, which is used for baking and bread, except for who? Abu Muhammad, Jolani, and Hayat Tahrir Sham. Therefore, they can fix their own prices and no one can do anything about it because there's no competition. No one is able to open up a, uh, a bakery except that they get their tools, their products, I should say their flour, directly from them. They cannot import it from Turkey themselves. They can't bring it in from overseas and no company can come in and do that. So therefore, they could set any price that they want and they do. And that's why the Syrian people began to rise up. Now some people would sit there and say, hey, wait a minute, Bilal. Problem solved, just take it easy, and it's not going to be a problem. But you got to keep another thing in mind. The monopoly or the monopolizing mentality doesn't stop with bread. Now, let's take a look at the fuel that, uh, uh, that the people here uh, in the Syrian territories use. Now, let's look at the pricing here and see if we can get an idea. Firstly, the price of gasoline in the territories in and around Idlib is 11.32 Turkish lira. However, in the Euphrates Shield area, it is 10.5 uh, Turkish lira for a liter of gasoline. If you look at imported diesel, it's 10.54 in Idlib, but in the Euphrates Shield areas, it's just 10 lira. Now, if you look at filtered uh, diesel, it's 6.64 Turkish lira to the liter. But in the Euphrates Shield areas, it's 5.75. You can see it is consistently lower priced in the Euphrates Shield areas than it is in the territories that are controlled by Abu Muhammad Jolani. Now, why is that? Because they can control the pricing. It gets worse than that. If you look at the gas canisters that people use to cook in the territories in and around Idlib, it is 157 and a half Turkish lira for one gas canister. But if you look in the Euphrates Shield areas, it's just 150 lira. The difference between the two is only one thing. There in Idlib, you have a monopoly. No one else can bring uh, any type of fuel into the territories of Idlib. Now, what happens if you actually do that? When you show up to the last checkpoint, just before you leave the Euphrates Shield areas and go into Idlib, well, you know what? Why don't we let our brother, uh, journalist, Hadi Al-Abdullah, tell you what actually happens. <laughs> أمام هاي الأزمة الاقتصادية الخانقة الحكومة بإدلب أخذت وضعية المزهرية لسيارات أخذت وضعية المزهرية يا ريت مزهرية قال شو حددوا كمية اللترات المفروضة تكون بكل سيارة جاي من ريف حلب الشمالي لإدلب ليه؟ لأنه سعر المحروقات بريف حلب الشمالي أرخص من إدلب وأي حدا بيخالف الكمية المحددة بتم مخالفته بمبلغ مالي That's right There's no mistake here what takes place is that they'll actually stick something into your gas tank to see how many liters of gasoline you have. If you've got more than 10 or 15 liters of gasoline, 
You have to dump it out. I mean, literally, I'm not making this up. This is not a joke. You have to dump it out. Before they were paying fines, but now you actually have to drain it out. Now it doesn't go down the drain, but it goes into a, 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 a barrel and they get to keep it. Why? Because they want everybody over there on that side to buy their fuel. Anybody who operates any type of service station where they get where they sell fuel, they got it from one source. What it? What it is the Heights Tahrir Sham company that imports the fuel from Turkey, but it's the only company that is allowed to, in, to import fuel from Turkey. It, it comes originally from Ukraine, but it comes through Turkey and then it enters into Idlib. So therefore, if there was some company out there that actually wanted to do the job for a better price and for a, che for a cheaper price and a better service, Nobody could do it or they'd end up in prison because it's been made memnur, as they say, or forbidden for anybody to bring in any type of uh, uh, fuel into the territories except them. But we started off saying, wait a minute, Bilal, this is a justice program. You're talking about economics. But if, this, if there was justice, what would happen is that person A would raise a case against Abu Muhammad Jolani and Hayat's Tahrir Shem. And they would both sit in front of a judge and they would plead their cases. The judge would make a ruling and then everybody benefits. But in these territories, you've got a monopoly. You've, they monopolize the, the financial sector, the judicial sector, the military sector, the security sector. So there's no opportunity for there to be any justice. And unfortunately, the result is usually bloodshed, and we ask Allah for that not to happen, and so that we would be able to solve our problems without resorting to bloodshed. My name is Bilal Abdul Karim. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.